Hey everyone, Zero Fossil Fuel. Today is Monday, June 6, 2011, D-Day. And many of you have been asking for some updates on my project. And if you, if you were watching the other evening, I think it was uh, Saturday evening on Justin TV, uh, I did have the Muller motor replication spinning under its own power up to uh, 4,975 RPM as measured with my digital tachometer. Um, almost 5,000 RPM at 13 volts, one set of coils. So um, pretty pleased with that, with that run. And right now I'm going to take you for a little tour of the, of the progress that I've made so far and hopefully give you a little bit of a preview of what's to come shortly. Okay, so here is the Muller motor replication as it, as it sits so far. You can see inside I have the hubs that I created that allow the rotor to spin perfectly true against the shaft. You can see that it spins very freely because I have the balancing magnets in place and there is almost little or no cogging. I do need to adjust it a little bit closer to, to null out the rest of that cogging that you see there, but right now this is good enough for testing. You can see I have two of the Muller style coils in place. They are wired in series and connected to a supply. Here's a few couple of other coils that I've, that I've wound. Two additional Muller style coils and two straight coils. These, these two coils here each have 97 turns. These two coils each have 160 turns. They're both epoxy encapsulated and uh, they came out really well. Here is the TIP33C power transistor that I'm using to drive the coils right now. Uh, I was using a Darlington transistor earlier that uh, gave me better, better collector saturation. However, uh, I blew them up. So, uh, <laughs> I'm using a slightly more rugged device, but it doesn't, it doesn't have the amount of gain that I need to really fully drive the coils. But I'll give you a brief demonstration of the uh, operation of the motor. There's the oscilloscope. It is connected across the... Uh, where do I have it connected? I have it connected across the emitter and collector of the transistor so that you can see the switching, switching voltage at the transistor. And I'm using my VS50M at 12 volts to power the circuit. This right here is a schematic diagram of the circuit that I was using with the Darlington. You can replace that Darlington transistor in, uh, with a, the TIP33C, which is not a Darlington transistor and uh, consequently doesn't have as much as much gain but this is this is basically the circuit that I'll be using in the demonstration and this is a circuit that I came up with la the other evening uh, that will drive the coil in one direction and then allow it to float in the opposite direction so that the back EMF uh, voltage spikes can be harvested and put back into the power supply rails. Alright, so I'm going to try and stay out of the frame here. Uh, what, I'm just, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Hall Effect device and I'm just going to place it in the field of the, of the uh, rotor magnets and it will switch the power transistor through the coils and you'll be able to see the waveform on the oscilloscope as the motor accelerates. Alright, so here we go. Incidentally, the uh, coils are wound in attraction, connected in attraction mode.
Now if the transistor was completely saturating that would be a much cleaner square wave that you would see but right now the transistor is not saturated so it's actually limiting the current going to the motor. Right now the speed is uh, 2600 RPM. see the, the generated AC voltage coming out of the transducer coils now. Notice how it looks very much like a sawtooth. It's uh, actually the leading edge of a sine wave and what looks like the discharge of a capacitor until it gets to the next peak. It's a very interesting waveform. And I'm just going to bring it to a stop. So about 3500 RPM and uh, that was a, a decent test run but like I said the, uh, the transistor is not saturating fully. I do, I'm not driving it hard enough to get it to switch on completely so it's actually generating a little bit of heat if I was to switch it on completely it would actually create a little bit less heat than that um, so this is a pretty decent run about 3200 rpm the other night uh, when I recorded it for Justin TV I had it up to approximately f almost 5000 rpm but the audio characteristics of the Justin TV system filter out anything that might resemble a tone so they don't want anybody broadcasting music it just filters only for voice and uh, anytime I had the uh, the motor running and it was a little bit too loud kinda sounded like uh, alien space sound effects it was pretty cool but unintelligible unfortunately the rest of my ferrets did arrive so I will be cutting uh, scoring and snapping these and uh, fitting them into place and assembling the rest of the uh, rest of the coils to the, the stator or at least the, the rest of the ferrites to the stator and I will be continuing to wind the coils to get them ready for a full-blown test with the uh, shot key diode rectifiers on the on the generator coils so that's all for now from the lab. I appreciate everyone watching. If you have not subscribed to my channel, I hope you will. And I hope you'll tell all your friends and family about it as well. We need clean energy. We need it right now. And we need everybody joining hands, joining forces, and working together to find a free, limitless source of energy that everyone can have and free mankind from the slavery that it is now subject to.
Peace, everyone.